Iran's President Hassan Rouhani has opened an exhibition showcasing hundreds of ancient Iranian artifacts returned to the country from Belgium after decades of legal battles. The artifacts were displayed at the National Museum of Iran recently in the presence of Rouhani and other senior Iranian officials. This came after an appeals court in Belgium's eastern city of Liege ruled in December 2014 that the country's authorities restitute 349 smuggled artifacts to Iran. Praising the efforts made by the Iranian legal team in returning the valuable antiques, Rouhani said the move showed the resolve of the government in safeguarding the rights of the Iranian nation. He noted that such cultural exhibitions can help diffuse Iranophobia in the world. He said that the artifacts show the Iranian nation's past and position as well as the plans which should be specified for the future. Masoud Asultanifa, who serves as the vice president and head of Iran's cultural heritage, handicrafts and tourism organization, also said returning these properties is a big political and legal victory for Iran. The ancient artifacts were looted over the past 10 years from the 3,000-year-old ancient site near the village of Korvin, situated 80 kilometers northeast of the Iranian capital Tehran. With the help of a Belgian diplomat, Yolande Wolf Carriers Maliki, a French national who acquired Iranian nationality by marriage in 1965, transferred the artifacts to Belgium 35 years ago. Following Iran's demand in 1981, a Brussels court ordered the seizure of the pieces and their preservation at the Museum of Brussels University pending a final verdict. The legal processing for returning the artifacts has lasted 33 years. Iranian officials have filed several other lawsuits in courts in Britain, France, Turkey and Pakistan for the return of smuggled artifacts over the past years. A human skeleton has been found in Tehran, suggesting that life in the city dates back to more than 5,000 years before Christ. Archaeologists found the 7,000-year-old skeleton in their excavations in Molavi Street, south of Tehran. Previously, the oldest archaeological findings ever retrieved in Tehran belonged to the city's Ketare Hills, which dated back to the first millennium BC. Many other historic items, most of them belonging to the previous centuries, have also been excavated in the site, which is located around Tehran's Grand Bazaar. According to the reports, the new skeleton is expected to be put on display in Iran's National Museum after the forensic tests are completed. The remarkable find has pushed the history of residents in Tehran back to 7,000 years ago. Earlier, the oldest archaeological finds in Tehran belonged to Getare Hills in the northeast and were 3,000 years old. The second exhibition of Iranian National Center for Laser Science and Technology has been launched in Tehran. More than 40 types of lasers, including strategic types, have been put on display in the exhibit, all of which have been showcased for the first time. The operational range of these lasers differs from milliwatts to multi-kilowatts. During the opening ceremony of the exhibition, head of Iran's atomic energy organization, Ali Akbar Salehi, said the Islamic Republic of Iran has taken big steps in application of laser for industrial, medical and defense purposes. He added that three types of semiconductive fiber and disc lasers have been displayed in the exhibition. Elaborating on laser's defense usages, Salehi noted that laser is applied in demining and jamming enemy radars. Meanwhile, Vice President for Science and Technology Affairs, Sorena Satari, said that the private sector has made remarkable progress in laser sciences. He said Iran is among the top countries in the domain of laser technology. Satari emphasized on commercialization of the technology. He went on to say that the Islamic Republic of Iran has well expanded the border of science in the field of laser around the city's Grand Bazaar.
the world's heaviest swing bridge completed a successful closure after a 109-minute traction rotating at an angle of 97 degrees in Zhucheng City of East China's Shandong Province on Monday. The 1,980-meter long swing bridge weighs 22,400 tons and is the heaviest in the world. The swing bridge links both sides of Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway in Zhucheng. The trains pass the bridge every five minutes and the electric wires are under construction over the rail tracks, making construction of the swing bridge unconventionally difficult. Pang Jianping, vice chief engineer of the China Railway Major Bridge Engineering Group Company Limited, said if it rotates in a shorter time, it needs a faster speed, thus posing safety risks. A steel strand was dragged through the stretch draw of the jack in order to rotate the turn plate and the bridge was rotated to the position they designed. Railway authorities arranged a two-hour gap of train operation for the rotating construction in order to ensure the safety of the rotating process. The bridge is scheduled to open for traffic in March. As a new traffic link between the east and west parts of Zhucheng, the bridge will greatly reduce pressure on urban traffic. A nature reserve in northwest China's Gansu province on Monday released a video footage of two wild giant pandas captured by camera traps installed in the mountains by researchers. In one video recorded during daytime in October last year shows an adult giant panda roaming in the woods in the Basui River Nature Reserve. A separate video recorded in December shows a younger giant panda in the same area. Nature Reserve workers found the video when they retrieved the cameras during a regular inspection and they also found video footage showing other endangered wild animals including snub-nosed monkeys which are under the highest level of state protection in China. The videos have shown the environment in the nature reserve is suitable to giant pandas as well as other wild animals according to the nature reserve authorities. A national survey on wild animals conducted during 2000 and 2001 estimated there were approximately 117 wild giant pandas inhabiting in Gansu, and 102 of them are in the Baisui River Nature Reserve. Chinese zoologists say the country has about 1,590 giant pandas in the wild, in addition to more than 310 in captivity. Archaeologists have found the ruins of a large-scale stone structure in Nara Prefecture, which may be a part of a burial mound for an ancient emperor. They say the structure, found in Asuka village, may have been built in the Asuka period in the 7th century as part of a burial mound for Emperor Zhou Mei. The structure is about 4 meters wide and 48 meters long. On one side, stones shaped into slabs were piled up like a 10-step flight of stairs. Officials in the Archaeological Institute of Kashihara discovered the ruins in a school compound last November. They say the quality of the stones indicate the structure was built in the mid-7th century. They also say the area surrounding the ruins indicate the original structure was a large square burial mound, with each side measuring more than 50 meters. They say it may have been the first tomb for Emperor Zhou Mei. It would be one of the largest burial mounds from the Asuka period in and around Nara. The discovery may have solved the mystery of Emperor Zhou Mei's first tomb. The 8th century Chronicles of Japan, called Nihon Shoki, states the emperor was buried in another location before his final resting place in what is now Sakurai City. Some experts argue the structure is probably linked to the powerful Soga clan. The ruins are similar in size to the Ishibutai burial mound, which is the purported tomb of strongman Soga no Umako. The Kashihira Institute plans to hold a public briefing about the discovery on Sunday.
People in central Japan have prayed for their good health while being sprayed with hot water in a traditional Shinto ritual. The annual event was held at the Aino Shrine in Ise City on last Wednesday. The rite dates back to the Edo period from the 17th to the 19th century. The hot water is believed to purify a devotee's body and soul and bring good fortune to those who have endured the heat. A priest at the shrine dipped bamboo leaves in the boiling water of a one-meter in diameter pot placed over a fire. He then shook the leaves several times, splashing the water over the attendees while they bowed their heads. A woman said she believes she and her family can now enjoy good health this year as they were sprinkled with a great amount of hot water. The shrine's attendants gave the bamboo used in the rite to attendees to place on their home altars or at their front entrances. The Korean film Ode to My Father has generated an unexpected result that is a surge in tourists to a village on South Korea's southern coast. Here is how the mega-hit movie brought the village into the spotlight. Korean movie Ode to My Father is this year's first blockbuster, attracting more than 10 million moviegoers. The movie is set in an era when the nation was struggling with poverty. The movie is about its main characters, Dyok Su and Yong Ja, hope for better days, working abroad as a minor and nurse respectively, in Germany. Some 40 years have passed since then. This is a village in Namhae, South Jongsang province, where migrant workers settled down after returning from Germany. The village testifies to the tough lives South Korean miners and nurses experienced abroad. Following the release of the movie, some 400 people visit the village on weekdays, more than double the number before. Jang Ki Han from Asan, as Chung Chong Province, said the nation was so poor it was inevitable. He feels grateful. The elderly, former miners, nurses greet and guide the visitors throughout the village. They want to share their past, filled with sweat and tears with the younger generations of Koreans. Kwang Kwan Soon, a former migrant nurse, said when listening to stories about their tough lives, many people share their sadness and shed tears. With the movie's popularity, the southern coastal village has newly been brought into the spotlight.